Act Four of Titus Andronicus by William Shakespeare. Act Four, Scene One: Rome, Titus's Garden. Enter young Lucius and Lavinia running after him, and the boy flies from her with books under his arm. Then enter Titus and Marcus. Help, grandsire! Help! My aunt Lavinia follows me everywhere. I know not why. Good uncle Marcus, see how swift she comes. Alas, sweet aunt, I know not what you mean. Stand by me, Lucius. Do not fear thine aunt. She loves thee, boy, too well to do thee harm. Ay, when my father was in Rome, she did. What means my niece Lavinia by these signs? Fear her not, Lucius. Somewhat doth she mean. See, Lucius, see how much she makes of thee. Some whither would she have thee go with her. Ah, boy, Cornelia never with more care read to her sons than she hath read to thee sweet poetry and Tully's orator. Canst thou not guess wherefore she plies thee thus? My lord, I know not I, nor can I guess, unless some fit or frenzy do possess her. For I have heard my grandsire say full oft extremity of griefs would make men mad. And I have read that Hecuba of Troy ran mad through sorrow. That made me to fear. Although, my lord, I know my noble aunt loves me as dear as e'er my mother did, and would not but in fury fright my youth, which made me down to throw my books and fly, causeless, perhaps. But pardon me, sweet aunt. And, madam, if my uncle Marcus go, I will most willingly attend your ladyship. Lucius, I will. Lavinia turns over with her stumps the books which Lucius has let fall. How now, Lavinia? Marcus, what means this? Some book there is that she desires to see. Which is it, girl, of these? Open them, boy. But thou art deeper read and better skilled. Come and take the choice of all my library, and so beguile thy sorrow till the heavens reveal the damned contriver of this deed. Why lifts she up her arms in sequence thus? I think she means that there was more than one confederate in the fact. Ay, more there was, or else to heaven she heaves them for revenge. Lucius, what book is that she tosseth so? Grandsire, tis Ovid's Metamorphoses. My mother gave it me. For love of her that's gone, perhaps she culled it from among the rest. Soft, see how busily she turns the leaves. Helping her. What would she find? Lavinia, shall I read? This is the tragic tale of Philomel, and treats of Tereus' treason and his rape. And rape, I fear, was root of thine annoy. See, brother, see. Note how she quotes the leaves. Lavinia, wert thou thus surprised, sweet girl, ravished and wronged as Philomela was, forced in the ruthless, vast and gloomy woods. See, see. Ay, such a place there is where we did hunt. Oh, had we never, never hunted there, patterned by that the poet here describes, by nature made for murders and for rapes. Oh, why should nature build so foul a den, unless the gods delight in tragedies? Give signs, sweet girl, for here are none but friends. What Roman lord it was durst do the deed? Or slunk not Saturnine, as Tarquin erst, that left the camp to sin in Lucrece's bed? Sit down, sweet niece. Brother, sit down by me. Apollo, Pallas, Jove, or Mercury, inspire me that I may this treason find. My lord, look here, look here, Lavinia. This sandy plot is plain. Guide, if thou canst, this after me, when I have writ my name without the help of any hand at all. He writes his name with his staff and guides it with feet and mouth. Cursed be that heart that forced us to this shift. Write thou, good niece, and here display at last what God will have discovered for revenge. Heaven guide thy pen to print thy sorrows plain, that we may know the traitors and the truth. She takes the staff in her mouth and guides it with her stumps and writes. Oh, do you read, my lord, what she hath writ? Stuprum, Chiron, Demetrius. What? What? The lustful sons of Tamora, performers of this heinous, bloody deed? Magni dominator poli, tam lentus adus scalera, tam lentus vidus. O oh, calm thee, gentle lord, although I know there is enough written upon this earth to stir a mutiny in the mildest thoughts, and arm the minds of infants to exclaims. My lord, kneel down with me. Lavinia, kneel. And kneel, sweet boy, the Roman Hector's hope, and swear with me. 
as, with the awful fear and father of that chaste dishonoured dame, Lord Junius Brutus swear for Lucretia's rape, that we will prosecute by good advice mortal revenge upon these traitorous Goths, and see their blood, or die with this reproach. Tis sure enough, and you knew how. But if you hunt these bare whelps, then beware. The dam will wake, and if she wind you once, she's with the lion deeply still in league, and lulls him whilst she playeth on her back. And when he sleeps, will she do what she list? You are a young huntsman, Marcus, let it alone. And come, I will go get a leaf of brass, and with a gad of steel will write these words, and lay it by. The angry northern wind will blow these sands like Sibyl's leaves abroad. And where's your lesson then? Boy, what say you? I say, my lord, that if I were a man, their mother's bedchamber should not be safe for these bad bondmen to the yoke of Rome. Ay, that's my boy. Thy father hath full oft for his ungrateful country done the like. And, uncle, so will I, and if I live. Come, go with me into mine armory. Lucius, I'll fit thee, and with all my boys shalt carry from me to the emperor's sons presents that I intend to send them both. Come, come, thou'lt do my message, wilt thou not? I, with my dagger in their bosoms, grandsire. No, boy, not so. I'll teach thee another course. Lavinia, come. Marcus, look to my house. Lucius and I'll go brave it at the court. Ay, Mary, will we, sir, and we'll be waited on. Exant Titus, Lavinia, and young Lucius. O oh, heavens, can you hear a good man groan and not relent, or not compassion him? Marcus, attend him in his ecstasy, that hath more scars of sorrow in his heart than foeman's marks upon his battered shield, but yet so just that he will not revenge. Revenge, ye heavens, for old Andronicus. Exit. End of Act 4, Scene 1. Act 4, Scene 2. The same. A room in the palace. Enter, from one side, Aaron, Demetrius, and Chiron. From the other side, young Lucius and an attendant, with a bundle of weapons and verses writ upon them. Demetrius, here's the son of Lucius. He hath some message to deliver us. Aye. Some mad message from his mad grandfather. My lords, with all the humbleness I may, I greet your honors from Andronicus. Aside. And pray the Roman gods confound you both. Gramercy, lovely Lucius, what's the news? Aside. That you are both deciphered, that's the news, for villains marked with rape. May it please you, my grandsire, well advised, hath sent by me the goodliest weapons of his armory to gratify your honorable youth, the hope of Rome, for so he bade me say, and so I do, and with his gifts present your lordships, that, whenever you have need, you may be armed and appointed well, and so I leave you both, aside, like bloody villains. Exant young Lucius in attendant. What's here? A scroll and written round about? Let's see. Reads. Integer vitae, scelerisque puris, non agit mauri jaculus nec arcu. Oh, tis a verse in Horace. I know it well. I read it in the grammar long ago. Ay, just. A verse in Horace. Right, you have it. Aside. Now what a thing it is to be an ass! Here's no sound jest. The old man hath found their guilt, and sends them weapons wrapped about with lines that wound beyond their feeling to the quick. But were our witty empress well afoot, she would applaud Andronicus' conceit. But let her rest in her unrest a while. And now, young lords, wast not a happy star led us to Rome, strangers, and more than so, captives, to be advanced to this height? It did me good before the palace gate to brave the tribune in his brother's hearing. But me more good to see so great a lord basely insinuate and send us gifts. Had he not reason, Lord Demetrius? Did you not use his daughter very friendly? I would we had a thousand Roman dames at such a bay by turn to serve our lust. A charitable wish and full of love. Here lacks but your mother for to say amen. And that would she for twenty thousand more. Come, let us go, and pray to all the gods for our beloved mother in her pains. Aside. Pray to the devils. The gods have given us over. 
trumpets sound within. Why do the emperor's trumpets flourish thus? Belike for joy the emperor hath a son. Soft, who comes here? Enter a nurse with a black amour child in her arms. Good morrow, lords. Oh, tell me, did you see Aaron the moor? Well, more or less, or ne'er a wit at all. Here Aaron is, and what with Aaron now? O oh, gentle Aaron, we are all undone. Now help, or woe betide thee evermore. Why, what a caterwauling dost thou keep? What dost thou wrap and fumble in thine arms? O oh, that which I would hide from heaven's eye, our empress's shame and stately Rome's disgrace. She is delivered, lords, she is delivered. To whom? I mean she is brought abed. Well, God give her good rest. What hath he sent her? A devil. Why, then, she is the devil's dam, a joyful issue. A joyless, dismal, black, and sorrowful issue. Here is the babe, as loathsome as a toad amongst the fairest breeders of our clime. The empress sends it thee, thy stamp, thy seal, and bids thee christen it with thy dagger's point. Zounds, ye whore! Is black so base a hue? Sweet blows, you are a beauteous blossom, sure. Villain, what hast thou done? That which thou canst not undo. Thou hast undone our mother. Villain, I have done thy mother. And therein, hellish dog, thou hast undone. Woe to her chance and damned her loathed choice. Accursed the offspring of so foul a fiend. It shall not live. It shall not die. Aaron, it must. The mother wills it so. What? Must it, nurse? Then let no man but I do execution on my flesh and blood. I'll broach the tadpole on my rapier's point. Nurse, give it me. My sword shall soon dispatch it. Sooner this sword shall plow thy bowels up. Takes the child from the nurse and draws. Stay, murderous villains. Will you kill your brother? Now, by the burning tapers of the sky that shone so brightly when this boy was got, he dies upon my scimitar's sharp point that touches this my first-born son and heir. I tell you, younglings, not Enceladus, with all his threatening band of Typhon's brood, nor great Alcides, nor the god of war, shall seize this prey out of his father's hands. What? What, ye sanguine, shallow-hearted boys, ye white-limed walls, ye alehouse-painted signs! Coal-black is better than another hue, in that it scorns to bear another hue, for all the water in the ocean can never turn the swan's black legs to white, although she lave them hourly in the flood. Tell the empress from me, I am of age to keep mine own, excuse it how she can. Wilt thou betray thy noble mistress thus? My mistress is my mistress, this myself, the vigour and the picture of my youth. This before all the world do I prefer. This maugre all the world will I keep safe, or some of you shall smoke for it in Rome. By this our mother is for ever shamed. Rome will despise her for this foul escape. The emperor in his rage will doom her death. Uh, I blush to think upon this ignominy. Why, there's the privilege your beauty bears. Fie, treacherous hue, that will betray with blushing the close enacts and counsels of the heart. Here's a young lad framed of another leer. Look how the black slave smiles upon the father, as who should say, Old lad, I am thine own. He is your brother, lords, sensibly fed of that self-blood that first gave life to you, and from that womb where you imprisoned were, he is enfranchised and come to light. Nay, he is your brother by the surer side, although my seal be stamped in his face. Aaron, what shall I say unto the empress? Advise thee, Aaron, what is to be done, and we will all subscribe to thy advice. Save thou the child, so we may all be safe. Then sit we down and let us all consult. My son and I will have the wind of you. Keep there. Now talk at pleasure of your safety. They sit. How many women saw this child of his? Why so, brave lords? When we join in league, I am a lamb. But if you brave the moor, the chafed boar, the mountain lioness, the ocean swells not so as Aaron storms. But say again. How many saw the child? Cornelia, the midwife, and myself, 
and no one else but the delivered empress. The empress, the midwife, and yourself? Two may keep counsel when the third's away. Go to the empress, tell her this I said. He kills the nurse. Weak, weak, so cries a pig prepared to the spit. What meanst thou, Aaron? Wherefore didst thou this? O oh, Lord, sir, tis a deed of policy. Shall she live to betray this guilt of ours, a long-tongued babbling gossip? No, lords, no. And now be it known to you my full intent. Not far, one Muley lives, my countryman. His wife but yesternight was brought to bed. His child is like to her, fair as you are. Go pack with him, and give the mother gold, and tell them both the circumstance of all, and how by this their child shall be advanced, and be received for the emperor's heir, and substituted in the place of mine to calm this tempest whirling in the court, and let the emperor dandle him for his own. Hark ye, lords, ye see I have given her physic, and you must needs bestow her funeral. The fields are near, and you are gallant grooms. This done, see that you take no longer days, but send the midwife presently to me. The midwife and the nurse well made away, then let the ladies tattle what they please. Aaron, I see thou wilt not trust the heir with secrets. For this care of Tamara, herself and hers are highly bound to thee. Exalt Demetrius and Chiron, bearing off the nurse's body. Now to the Goths, as swift as swallow flies, there to dispose this treasure in mine arms, and secretly to greet the Empress' friends. Come on, you thick-lipped slave, I'll bear you hence, for it is you that puts us to our shifts. I'll make you feed on berries and on roots, and feed on curds and whey, and suck the goat, and cabin in a cave, and bring you up to be a warrior and command a camp. Exit. End of Act 4, Scene 2 Act 4, Scene 3. The same. A public place. Enter Titus bearing arrows with letters at the ends of them. With him, Marcus, young Lucius, Publius, Sempronius, Caius, and other gentlemen with bows. Come, Marcus, come, kinsman, this is the way. Sir boy, now let me see your archery. Look ye, draw home enough, and tis there straight. Teras astrea reliquit. Be you remembered, Marcus, she's gone, she's fled. Sirs, take you to your tools. You, cousins, shall go sound the ocean and cast your nets. Happily you may catch her in the sea. Yet there's as little justice as at land. No, Publius and Sempronius, you must do it. Tis you must dig with mattock and with spade, and pierce the inmost centre of the earth. Then, when you come to Pluto's region, I pray you, deliver him this petition. Tell him it is for justice and for aid, and that it comes from old Andronicus, shaken with sorrows in ungrateful Rome. Ah, Rome, well, well, I made thee miserable, what time I threw the people's suffrages on him that thus doth tyrannize o'er me. Go, get you gone, and pray be careful all, and leave you not a man of war unsearched. This wicked emperor may have shipped her hence. And, kinsmen, then we may go pipe for justice. O oh, Publius, is not this a heavy case, To see thy noble uncle thus distract? Therefore, my lord, it highly us concerns By day and night to attend him carefully, And feed his humour kindly as we may, Till time beget some careful remedy. Kinsmen, his sorrows are past remedy. Join with the Goths and with revengeful war take wreck on Rome for this ingratitude, and vengeance upon the traitor Saturnine. Publius, how now, how now, my masters, what have you met with her? No, my good lord, but Pluto sends you word, if you will have revenge from hell, you shall. Marry, for justice she is so employed, he thinks, with Jove in heaven, or somewhere else, so that perforce you must needs stay a time. He doth me wrong to feed me with delays. I'll dive into the burning lake below and pull her out of Acheron by the heels. Marcus, we are but shrubs, no cedars we, no big-boned men frame it of the cyclops' size, but metal, Marcus, steel to the very back, yet wrung with wrongs more than our backs can bear. And sith there's no justice in earth nor hell, we will solicit heaven and move the gods 
to send down justice for to wreak our wrongs. Come to this gear. You are a good archer, Marcus. He gives them the arrows. Ad Jovum, that's for you. Here, ad Apollinum. Ad Martum, that's for myself. Here, boy, to Pallas. Here, to Mercury. To Saturn, Caius. Not to Saturnine. You are as good to shoot against the wind. To it, boy. Marcus, loose when I bid. Of my word I have written to effect. There's not a guard left unsolicited. Kinsman, shoot all your shafts into the court. We will afflict the emperor in his pride. Now, masters, draw. They shoot. Oh, well said, Lucius. Good boy, in Virgo's lap, give it Pallas. My lord, I aim a mile beyond the moon. Your letter is with Jupiter by this. <laughs> Publius, Publius, what hast thou done? See, see, thou hast shot off one of Taurus' horns. This was the sport, my lord. When Publius shot, the bull, being galled, gave Ares such a knock that down fell both the ram's horns in the court. And who should find them but the empress' villain? She laughed, and told the more he should not choose but give them to his master, for a present. Why, there it goes. God give his lordship joy. Enter a clown with a basket and two pigeons in it. News, news from heaven. Marcus, the post is come. Sirrah, what tidings? Have you any letters? Shall I have justice? What says Jupiter? Oh, the gibbet-maker. He says that he hath taken them down again, for the man must not be hanged till the next week. But what says Jupiter, I ask thee? Alas, sir, I know not Jupiter. I never drank with him in all my life. Why, villain, art thou not the carrier? I have my pigeons, sir, nothing else. Why didst thou not come from heaven? From heaven? Alas, sir, I never came there. God forbid I should be so bold to press to heaven in my young days. Why, I am going with my pigeons to the tribunal plebs to take up the matter of brawl betwixt my uncle and one of the imperial's men. Why, sir, that is as fit as can be to serve for your oration. And let him deliver the pigeons to the emperor from you. Tell me, can you deliver an oration to the emperor with a grace? Nay, truly, sir, I can never say grace in all my life. Sir, come hither, make no more ado. But give your pigeons to the emperor. By me thou shalt have justice at his hands. Hold, hold. Meanwhile, here's money for thy charges. Give me pen and ink. Sirrah, can you with a grace deliver a supplication? Ay, sir. Then here is a supplication for you. And when you come to him, at the first approach you must kneel. Then kiss his foot, then deliver up your pigeons, and then look for your reward. I'll be at hand, sir. See you do it bravely. I warrant you, sir, let me alone. Sirrah, hast thou a knife? Come, let me see it. Here, Marcus, fold it in the oration, for thou hast made it like an humble suppliant. And when thou hast given it the emperor, knock at my door, and tell me what he says. God be with you, sir, I will. Come, Marcus, let us go. Publius, follow me. Exeunt. End of Act 4, Scene 3. Act 4, Scene 4. The same, before the palace. Enter Saturnius, Tamara, Demetrius, Chiron, lords and others. Saturnius with the arrows in his hand that Titus shot. Why, lords, what wrongs are these? Was ever seen an emperor in Rome thus overborne, troubled, confronted as? And for the extent of eagle justice used in such contempt. My lords, you know as know the mightful gods, however this disturbers of our peace, buzz in the people's ears. There not had passed, but even with law, against the willful sons of old Andronicus. And what end, if his sorrows have so overwhelmed his weeds, shall we be thus afflicted in his rags, his feeds, his frenzy, and his bitterness? And now he writes to heaven for his redress. See, here is to Jove, and this to Mercury, this to Apollo, this to the god of war. So it scrolls to fly about the streets of Rome. What is this but libelling against the Senate, and blazoning our injustice everywhere? A goodly humour, is it not, my lords? As who would say in Rome no justice were? But if I leave, his feigned ecstasies shall be no shelter to these outrages. But he and his shall know that justice leaves in Saturninus's hells 
who makes his sleep, he will so awake as the in fury shall cut off the proudest conspirator that leaves. My gracious lord, my lovely Saturnine, lord of my life, commander of my thoughts, call me, and bear the faults of Titus' age, the effects of sorrow for his valiant sons, whose loss hath pierced him deep and scarred his heart, and rather comfort his distressed plight than prosecute the meanest or the best for these contempts. Aside. Why thus it shall become high-witted Tamara to glows with all. But, Titus, I have touched thee to the quick, thy life-blood out. If Aaron now be wise, then all is safe, the anchor's in the port. Enter Clown. How now, good fellow? Wouldst thou speak with us? Yea, forsooth, and your mistership be imperial. Empress I am, but yonder sits the emperor. Tis he. God and Saint Stephen give you good den. I have brought you a letter and a couple of pigeons here. Saturnius reads the letter. Go, take him away, and hang him presently. How much money must I have? Come, Sirrah, you must be hanged. Hanged? By a lady, then, I have brought up a neck to a fair end. Exit. Guarded. Despiteful and intolerable wrongs, shall I endure this monstrous villainy? I know from whence this same device proceeds. May this be born, as if his traitor sons that died by love or murder of our brother have by my means been butchered wrongfully. Go drag the villain heater by the hair, nor rage nor honour shall shape privilege, for this proud mock I will be thy slaughter man. Sly frantic wretch that holps to make me great, in hope thyself should govern Rome and me. Enter Amelius. What news with thee, Amelius? Arm, arm, my lord. Rome never had more cause. The Goths have gathered head, and with the power high resolved men bent to the spoil, they hither march amain under conduct of Lucius, son to old Andronicus, who threats in the course of this revenge, to do as much as ever Coriolanus did. Is well like Lucius, general of the guards. These tidings sneep me, and I hang the head as flowers with frost or grass beat down with storms. Ay, now begin our sorrows to approach. It is he the common people love so much. Myself had often overheard them say, when I have walked like a private man, that Lucius' banishment was wrongfully and they have wished that Lucius were their emperor. Why should you fear? Is not your city strong? Ay, but the citizens favour Lucius, and will revolt from me to succour him. King, be thy thoughts imperious like thy name. Is the sun dimmed that gnats do fly in it? The eagle suffers little birds to sing, and is not careful what they mean thereby. Knowing that with the shadow of his wings he can at pleasure stint their melody, even so mayst thou the giddy men of Rome. Then cheer thy spirit, for know, thou emperor, I will enchant the old Andronicus with words more sweet and yet more dangerous than baits to fish or honey stalks to sheep, when as the one is wounded with the bait, the other rotted with delicious feed. But he will not entreat his son for us. If Tamara entreat him, then he will. For I can smooth and fill his aged ear with golden promises, that were his heart almost impregnable, his old ears deaf, yet should both ear and heart obey my tongue. To Amelius. Go thou before, be our ambassador. Say that the emperor requests a parley of warlike Lucius, and appoint the meeting even at his father's house, the old Andronicus. Amelius, do this message honourably, and if he stand on hostage for his safety, bid him demand what pledge will please him best. Your bidding shall I do effectually. Exit. Now will I to that old Andronicus, and temper him with all the art I have to pluck proud Lucius from the warlike Goths. And now, sweet emperor, be blithe again, and bury all thy fear in my devices. Then go succinctly and plead to him. Exeunt. End of Act 4, Scene 4
End of Act 4